Take two. We're going to try this again. Hey, y'all, this is Preacher Jonathan from Union Chapel Free Will Baptist Church. Glad to be with you via Facebook tonight. We are working on uh, the book of Acts is what we've been studying in the past uh, the past little while in, in, uh, on our Wednesday night prayer meeting services. And, uh, and we're all the way in chapter 14 and uh, just getting into Paul's first missionary journey. And we're looking into uh, how the um, how the whole um, transition from Judaism to Christianity was by the Jews and uh, the struggles that it took to, for them to do that. Uh, Paul and his entourage, if you will, and his ministry he really had to do a lot of, of fighting, if you will, um, not only physically but spiritually as well. Because simply because the um, the day of the synagogue was was the was the religion of the day, if you will, Judaism, and which was the Mosaic Law and um, everything that pertained to the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. So, uh, but we're in a transition period in the Book of Acts from when the church was born uh, at the day of Pentecost to what it is to Judaism in the Old Testament. Uh, to Christianity and believing in Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and that He died for our sins and 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 paid the price that we don't no longer have to bring a sacrifice to the um, to 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 the synagogue or to the temple uh, or the church today. You know, we don't have to bring any any kind of bloody sacrifice. We have the sacrifice, the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. Chapter fourteen. Uh, if you're out there, send me a note that it's working. Um, and we're in chapter 14 of the book of Acts. If you'd like to read along with us, we're going to read through. What we do is we just kind of read through and, and look, at, um, look at what's going on. And um, I'm, let me answer this email right here. I mean, it's, let me do that right there. Fantastic. So we're going <laughs> to... I can't do that in church, I reckon. But um, so we're gonna we're gonna just start in verse one, chapter fourteen, and go through, make some comments, and uh, in chapter thirteen, let me recap for just a minute. This was the 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 way that that Paul was presenting uh, Jesus Christ as the Savior is very simply because uh, he was taking the Old Testament uh, scriptures and and Proverbs and Psalms and and all the Pentateuch, the prophets and the law. It's called. And he's using all of that to very simply uh, transition into this Jesus to whom you crucified is the actual one the Old Testament is talking about. And so uh, that's how Paul is using the scripture that they know, the Old Testament, and, and turning the transition from Judaism to Christianity, to Jesus Christ, to the Son of God, right? So, so that's where they're at. And chapter 14 is when Paul and Barnabas leave uh, Antioch and they go to Iconium. So in verse 1, it says, And it came to pass uh, in Iconium that they, that they, Paul and Barnabas, both went together into the synagogue of the Jews. And so spake that a great multitude of both Jews and also of the Greeks believed. Praise the Lord. A couple of things in that first verse. Notice they went together. They were unified. They were on the same page. There was no squabble. There was no, um, there was no conflict between Paul and Barnabas. There was unity, and the unity was to preach the gospel, to get the message out of who Jesus Christ is and what he has done for you. So that's the first thing. They were together. It says they went both together. I mean, it could have said that they went both into the synagogue. We'd have understood but notice it said they were together. It's an extra word in there for our benefit. Also, notice that they went on the Sabbath day. They went into the synagogue. So it had to be the Sabbath day because that's when the Jews gathered, the last day. It was the day of rest, the day that, that God, after he created the earth, he rested the Sabbath day, the seventh day, the last day of the week, which was Saturday. So Paul and Barnabas went into the synagogue on Saturday, on the Sabbath day, to go in there to 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 not stir up anything. They're going as custom because they are Jews and they go in there and what does it say? It says that they, um, and so to speak. 
Now in chapter 13, they went into the synagogue and the people that were there knew who Paul was. And so they asked Paul to speak because he was a Jew. He had that right to go in there and speak. So when he comes to Iconium, I don't know if word has, has, has gotten to the Iconians and, and saying that Paul and Barnabas are on the way, on the way. And I don't, I don't know that for sure, but nonetheless, when they get to the synagogue, they have given, they have been given the opportunity to speak, as it says in verse one, that a great, and they spoke. And when they spoke, the result was a great multitude, not just four or five or 10 or one or two, a great multitude of people, both Jews and Greeks believed in Jesus Christ. Man, that's, that's called a revival. You know, and I'm gonna tell you what's the truth. That's what we need in our churches today. In Free Will Baptist churches, we need that in, in everything that calls themselves a church. We need a revival back to God's word and who Jesus Christ is. Digress, back to verse two. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles, that's everybody that's not a Jew, and made their minds evil, affectioned against the brethren. And it's just, that's usually what causes most all the problems is people that, that are unbelieving or don't have enough faith to believe in God that can, God can do what he said he can do. And I mean, that's what the problem is. And that's what's going on today. Um, the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles. Notice they didn't stir up the, the Jews. They stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil. That that's, could be said made their souls bitter or angry. Do you see that today? I see it today. I see it in some people um, in the political realm that they have, they have got so much hatred and so much um, anger that they are impeaching President Trump a second time today. And so you look at that and that's, and I know this is religion and politics is not, but in some people's lives, po po politics is their religion. And that's where they're at today. And what this country needs from the White House, or the White House all the way to the outhouse is we need a revival. We need a revival of Jesus Christ. But notice what the unbelieving Jews did. They just stirred up strife. They stirred up the Gentiles. They stirred them up in their mind, murmuring and complaining and gossiping and, and all this mess. And they just got into their heart and there they are. And, um, and they're, call, and they're not causing unity, they're causing havoc is what they're doing. And uh, so I wanna, I wanna start a timer or stopwatch here so I know how long I'm going. Um, so so ver that's verse two, and in effect against the brethren. Who's the brethren? The brethren's the church. They're the ones that believe. They're the multitude in verse one. And just as you know, anytime you get a newborn Christian, uh, they're gonna have a lot of questions. They're gonna have a lot of, unknown they, they ain't been in the scripture they're on the milk and uh so they ain't got a lot of beliefs so here comes the unbelieving jews here comes satan stirring in the church and it's and it's every and it's in every church if, if it's allowed um and, and you got to be careful because it's very easily every very easily um done mary you say we're cutting in and out all right um uh, what did what the what I own, it goes away. We'll try that for a little while, Miss Mary. If that if that don't work, or somebody like me, just let me know. I can see your comments on the uh, thing. I see my cousin Billy Weaver all the way up, and uh, I believe he's in New Hampshire. He's watching tonight. We got folks from Wilson. We got folks from um, Middlesex. We got uh, thank you, Miss Kendall Perry. It's clear on your end. Thank you. Uh, we got folks all the way down in Wilmington to Wilson today. <laughs> so praise the Lord. And there that didn't deter Paul and Barnabas and I think that's the theme in chapter 14 they weren't deterred from what they were had to do 
but they boldly proclaim speaking in the Lord. Um, and, and praise the Lord, they just went on at it. They preached the gospel. They preached who Jesus was and, and the things that he did while he was here on earth. And they preached who he was and that he was the son of God and that he is our savior and that he is our, um, that he is our lamb. He is the lamb that takes away the sin of the world and he's ours. And notice what they preached. They gave testimony of what happened in their life, Paul and Barnabas and the others that were with them. They gave testimony of what Jesus did for them. Amen. And notice what else it says, that they gave that God's grace was given unto them and signs and wonders. That means miracles and, and, and things happened that seemed to be supernatural uh, to us, but to God, they're natural. Um, but those says in, the, in the verse 3 in the beginning, it says, and a long time they abode speaking. They weren't worried about the clock. They weren't worried about getting out at 12 o'clock noon because the fried chicken would be cooking. Amen. They preached the gospel as long as they needed to preach the gospel until the service was over, period. Until God quit moving. And uh, there's Miss Betty Davis and there's Miss Kendall Perry, and there's Miss Felicia, and uh, Brandon Dominguez, and there's Casey Pierce. Hey, all the there's Michael Benson. How you doing, Shane? I ain't seen you in a while. God bless you, brother. Good to see you. Uh, hope you get. Hope all y'all get something out of this tonight. So let's go to verse four in chapter fourteen of Acts. It says, "But the multitude of the city was divided." Now we see that today, don't we? In America, we see people that are divided in America. It's almost right down the middle, it seems. Um, and you know what the Bible says about a house divided? It cannot stand. So if America's going to stand, if America's going to continue on, uh, something's got to happen in America to unify us as Americans. You know, in my opinion, we don't need to keep having a, an American hashtag, or I mean, American uh, hyphen, I'm, a, I'm an American something or I'm a something American. Either you are an American or you ain't. If you're born here, you're an American. Quit trying to be something else, you know? And listen, I know your heritage. I ain't from here. I'm not an American Indian, but I don't go back and say I'm an English American or European American, or I'm not a, 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 a I, I don't know, a, 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 I doubt I'm an Italian American. Ain't nothing Italian about this, brown hair, brown eyes. Um, uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, some other country from over there, but I'm an American. I'm not a nothing else. That's one thing that would unify our country is just, let's just be Americans. Let's benefit our country. Let's come together and love each other. Amen. Um, but the last four years, you know, was resist, resist and, you know, and all that. Uh, but what we need, and again, I'll say this again, what we need is a revival. So, so that's what we need, folks, period. That's what we need. So, uh, but verse four, but the multitude of the city was divided. Why were they divided? Because Jesus is the truth. And there will always be division when it comes to Jesus. Surrounding Jesus Christ, there will always be people that are for him and there will always be people that are against him, period. And even those that believe in Jesus Christ, you see it in today's denominations. They look at the same Bible you and I are looking at, and they and we can't come into unity and agreement on the doctrines of the Word of God. It's sad. It's black and white.
to change what they believe. And then the other half that got saved, got born again, were with the apostles. That's normal, I, I, I would assume, because you, you're trying to you're trying to re, re invent the whole entire religious system and change from Judaism to, to Christianity, from sacrifices to Jesus being the sacrifice, from being able to pray to a saint versus praying to Jesus. Amen? Praying through Jesus, in Jesus' name, via the Holy Ghost. Because you remember Acts chapter 2, the Holy Ghost came down and the Holy Ghost, God to forgive us of our sins. We become born again. The Holy Spirit enters into us. John 6, 14, 14, 6 says he draws us. 6 and 14. He draws us. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit does. And when he draws us and we accept and we repent and we come to him and become born again, he enters into us. We become a, a, a new born again person. Our physicalness doesn't change. Our, our, um, our mind doesn't change, but our soul is born again. Praise the Lord. And when that happens, the Holy Spirit enters in. And that's what happened here. Half of the country, half of the city in Iconium stayed with the Jews, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. And there was a, there was a divide. And anytime there's a divide, nothing is ever going to be peaceful. Okay? So let's go on. Verse 5. Or not. I hope that's back. Did that any, any of that cut out? I hope not. Uh, well, there you go. We're, we're back in verse number 5. And when there was a an assault made both of the Gentiles and also the Jews with their rulers to use them, the rulers, despitefully and to stone them. They were going to use their religious clout to stone Paul and Barnabas because they were teaching in the Judaizer, Judaizers' eyes, they were teaching hypocrisy because they were saying that Jesus Christ is the son of God and therefore equal with God. And so that's blasphemy. And in the Jewish faith, in the Judaism faith, the, the, the penalty for um, of blasphemy is stoning the dead. That's pretty serious. That's how serious they take it. And so they were using their religious leaders and clout here to use their, um, their, their persuasiveness to have Paul and Barnabas stoned to death. In verse six, and they were aware of it, Paul and Barnabas were aware of it, and they fled to Lystra and Derby, cities of Lyconia and unto the regions that lie about. So they were, they were able to escape. But when they got to Lystra and Derby, it says there they preached the gospel. They just found out in Iconium they were fixing to be stoned to death. They fled and they went to Lystra and Derby and they hunkered down and got quiet and scared. No, that ain't what they did. They went right back into the synagogue and they were right back in there preaching, preaching Jesus Christ. You know why? Because they believed it. It was in their heart. It was in their soul. It was in their life. It didn't matter if they were going to be stoned to death or not. It didn't matter if they were, their very life was going to be taken. Praise the Lord. They went and preached the gospel. Not today, though, man. Man, we get, we get scared today. We can't, we can't stand up in the... It was our job. We can't stand on the street corner and preach the Lord Jesus. We might get arrested. Oh, my goodness. You know, we, we might, I don't know, stand anywhere, just preach the gospel. We're afraid somebody might say something to us. Listen, we as born again Christians need to get the word out. We need to get Jesus Christ out. We need to get off ourselves and get on the, 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 get off the truck train, get on the Jesus train. We need to get on the train that provides a real future for individuals, not only in heaven, but here on earth. God wants to bless his people. But what does it say in Chronicles? It says that we got to humble ourselves before him, turn from our wicked ways and God will heal our land. But until we do that, God ain't gonna heal this mess. 
I heard somebody say one time, God can't bless a mess. that that man had faith to be healed. There's a lot of people out there today that want to be healed. And there's a lot of people out there that have got a lot of faith, but for some reason, God's not healing them. I do not know why God wouldn't heal them. I don't know if it's their lack of faith, which I doubt that it is, or if it's just not God's will or if it's just the sin curse that we have. when she died the very moment that she took her last breath she stepped into glory and she was fine this man here Paul looked at him perceived that he had faith to be healed and Paul said with a loud voice stand upright on thy feet and the man just kind of whimpered and rolled over that ain't what the Bible says the Bible says and that man leaped and he walked. That's a bona fide Jesus miracle right there, ladies and gentlemen. Paul came into this Lystra and he's going to preach Jesus Christ. And, and over there in the first couple of verses there in chapter 14 talks about signs and wonders. We get to Lystra and one is actually recorded. This man who had never walked from his mother's womb had never walked. He... Paul saw him, saw that he had faith, believed in what Paul was preaching, this Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Savior of the world, and the one is the Son of God and could heal him. And you know what? Paul looked at him. He perceived that he had the faith that he needed. And he said, son, he said, get up. We need to preach that in the churches today because a lot of them laying around in the pews dead almost. Amen. <laughs> but you know what? That's what happened. How do I know it happened? Oh, that's just a story in the Bible, Jonathan. That, that didn't really, that's like, that's like, that's like the whale in Jonah. That didn't really happen. That's just a story, right? No, it's written in the Bible and the Bible don't lie. Amen. So if the Bible don't lie, then Paul, when he got listed and saw this man, he said, boom, guess what? You got enough faith to be healed. Stand up. And the man said, get up on your feet. And the man leaped up and he walked. And when the people saw what Paul had done in verse 11, they got all out of shape. 
They didn't understand. They didn't listen to what Paul was preaching. They didn't listen to that Paul said this is of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Because watch what happened to this crowd. Verse 11, when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices in the speech of Lyconia in their language. The gods, plural and little g, not Jehovah, amen, not Jesus, not the Holy Spirit. The gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. You know what that is? Religious ignorance. That's all that is. And it said, and they called Barnabas, Jupiter, and Paul Mercurius because he was the chief speaker. Basically, it says that they called Barnabas Jupiter, which is Zeus, and they called Paul Hermes, which if you know anything about the Greek culture, you know that those are the Greek gods that they made up that we studied in high school. Or in my case, middle Normally, I would be sitting in the hallway in a desk or in a chair because I was talking in class. That was normally when I, I was out in the hallway, sitting out there in the hallway for tests because I didn't want to learn anything at all about this Greek mythology mess. And, and, and this is where it comes from right here, these Greeks. And it says right here that Paul was called, uh, Barnabas was called Jupiter or Zeus, and Paul was called Mercurius or Hermes because he was the chief speaker. And th if, if you get it, there you go. Maybe that's, I don't know how much of that y'all got. But verse, verse 12 and 13, Paul and Barnabas are being called uh, gods, little g, little s. And they would have done sacrifice to Paul and Barnabas because they healed this man that had never walked before. Verse 14 says, and when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul heard that they were going to do that, they rent their clothes. I mean, they just, they were so distraught. I mean, that was a sign of an outward emotion of, oh my goodness, what are you doing? Don't do that. It says, and they ran in among the people and they cried out saying, sirs, why do you do these things? We are also men of like passions with you. We're just like you. We cry, we, we laugh, we, we get mad, we get upset, we bleed. We're just like you, we're people, we're men. It says, we also are men of like passions with you and preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities or empty emptiness, this empty religion, because it's, it's just a man-made religion. Anything other than... The only true and living God is Jehovah, God. The only Son of God is Jesus Christ. And the only Spirit is the Spirit of God is the Holy Spirit. Everything else is man-made and made up of the devil, period. Mark my words. You don't believe me? Wait till it's time to go to the judgment seat. You'll see. There'll be God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. They'll be the only ones up there able to judge everything. It takes faith to believe that. And that's what people run from today. They run from what Paul was preaching, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And if you don't go through Jesus Christ by the cross, you will not go to heaven. He came to sacrifice himself for you. And for me, and he died on a cross that we might go to heaven and be with him forever. Because when he made us, way back in Genesis, in the beginning, when he made Adam and Eve, God's desire was to have fellowship, us with him. 
with our free will, our desire to be with him. And that's why he made us. And that's why Jesus came to restore that connection between us and Jehovah. And anything else other than that is a fake false religion. It goes on in verse 15, Paul and, and them were gonna rip their clothes that He is there. They are his chosen people. It says in verse 17, there's a nevertheless. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. God didn't abandon the people of the earth. He still gave them rain. He still gave them food. He still provided for them. Verse 18, and with these sayings, when, when Paul said that, that really stirred these people up because they really believed in what they believe, even though it's wrong and it's, and it's a lie, they still believe it. And there's people out there today, I don't care how strong you talk to them, they're not going to be turned. The only person that can turn them is the Holy Spirit. It says, and. Jews in verse 19 are of the same sect as Paul then Saul used to be. I guarantee these are the same people of the same religion. They have followed them to Lystra and they're trying to do the same thing Saul would have done before he got born again. You see, once we find the truth and once we find Jesus and once we realize that we have done wrong our entire lives, if we have enough faith in Jesus Christ, what will happen to me and what will happen to you and what will happen to anybody, if they have enough faith, Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and they persuaded the people having stoned Paul. They grabbed him, they stoned him to death, they thought. It says they drew him out of the city. They, they drug him. They stoned him so badly that he thought they thought that he was dead and they drug him outside of the city supposing he'd be dead. Let me ask you a question. Would you do that? Not stone.
takes great faith. But let me show you what happened here to Paul. Verse 20, Howbeit as the disciples stood round about him, Paul, he arose up. And he came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. 24 to 36 hours, Paul was back on his feet. And in verse 21, and when they, Paul and his entourage, had preached the gospel to that city in Derby, and had taught many, and had returned again to Lystra and Iconium and Antioch. They were not deterred. They stoned him almost to death. And in 36 hours, he was right back preaching the gospel. That's great faith. That's a belief. That's like Abraham who's got his only son carrying the firewood up to the mountain. And God's telling Abraham to sacrifice his son who was born of his old age of 100 years old and he's carrying up the mountain to make sacrifice and God told him to sacrifice his, his son. That's great faith. And as they travel up the mountain, his son asked him, he said, Father, we have the firewood and we've got the fire. And when we get up there, we're going to build an altar. And his son asked Abraham, he said, where's the sacrifice? And Abraham in his mind knew that God told him to sacrifice his son. And Abraham said to his son, God will provide. He's the promised son. But Abraham believed God enough that if he would be obedient to God, that God would spare his son. Or if he sacrificed him, he'd bring him back to life. Paul here was stoned to death, almost. Got up, and in 36 hours, the next day, the Bible says, was preaching in Derby, where they escaped to. But that ain't the half of it. Not only did they preach the gospel, it says they taught many. So they spent some time there. They, they preached the gospel and taught who Jesus was. And then what did they do? They fled to Jerusalem because they were scared. No, what did they do? They went right back to Lystra. They went right back into where they just came from. Where they were just stoned to death. I don't know about you, but I would avoid that place like the plague. Them people really don't like me. You know, we as preachers sometimes, well, I've got, I got four people voted against me in church and I just, I, I can't stay there no more because it's just too, too much conflict in the church. Why not try to work it out? Where is the faith that God's going to work it out? It said not only did they go back to Lystra, they also went back to Iconium where they started, well not where they started, but when they when we started tonight in chapter 14. And then they went all the way back to Antioch, which is where they started. Verse 22 says, confirming the souls of the disciples, they went back through the towns that they went uh, the first time when they went through, they went back through and they talked to the people to make sure that they're still in the faith. They're still believing. You're still holding on. Remember, it's Jesus Christ. He's the one. He's the son of God. Have faith in him. And it says they confirmed the souls of the disciples. They exhorted them. They lifted them up. They built them up. They taught them some more to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. If we are going to get to heaven, it's not going to be a gold street here on earth. The Bible said the gold street's in heaven. Between here and there is a rocky road. Between now and us going to heaven, it's going to be a rocky road. But keep your eyes on Jesus. If we keep our eyes on Jesus, then he said he would make the crooked way straight, but he didn't say they'd be smooth. 
Tribulation is going to come. If you stand up for Jesus, they're going to persecute you. They're going to persecute me. The world it is. Why? Because even Jesus said, he said, they persecute me because of who I am. They're going to persecute you because you believe in me. Amen? He said, they first persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. And it says here, Paul said, with much tribulation, you will enter into the kingdom of God. They confirmed the disciples, they exhorted them, and he told them to continue in the faith and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. And when they had ordained them elders in every church, preachers, and had prayed with fasting, they prayed and fasted, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. Now, I'm, going to, I'm just going to stop right there because that's a good spot. Time's coming and gone. Listen, I'm going to tell you what. There's a lot of meat in this right here in this chapter 14 so far as we've got. First of all, we have got to know that Jesus Christ is our Savior. We've got to have that faith. We can't be wavering. We have got to be, we have got to continue in the faith. No matter how much tribulation, we've got to continue in the faith. And lastly, in this chapter, we have seen the pure steadfastness of your faith. Do not be deterred. Do not allow the world to come at you and to hurt you and to talk to you and to be able to try to persuade you against Jesus Christ. Don't you do it. You look at right faith, square in the face, and you say, Jesus Christ is my Savior, my Lord, in him whom I trust. Amen? And if we'll do that very thing, I promise you, brothers and sisters, no matter what happens to us here on this earth, when we get to heaven, he will welcome us with open arms. And I'm looking forward to that day. And I hope you are. Thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, it's good to see you, Miss Rita, all the way down there in Macedonia and Ernal, North Carolina. Kurt Russell, good to see you, buddy. Um, and all the way, all the way from Wilson to Wilmington, all the way up to New Hampshire, got family all the way up there. So we thank y'all. We love y'all. God bless you. And uh, we'll see you Sunday morning right here on Facebook. Um, we're going to figure out how to do it on, on YouTube maybe, but we're definitely going to be on Facebook and, uh, we'll try to get, uh, the, the message on YouTube so it can go even further. So we love you. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you again and we'll start right back here. Uh, on this next Wednesday night if you can't join us on Sunday morning. So God bless you. We'll see you then, 11 o'clock, thereabouts. God bless. I'll talk to you then. Bye-bye.